Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing antithrombin-3 and heparin. Okay, so uh, we are in the process of discussing how antithrombin-3, which is this uh, normal constituent of the blood which is produced by the liver, is actually activated. And it's activated by binding to heparan sulfate, or, which is a polysaccharide on the surface of the endothelial cells. And I now want to attempt to explain to you what heparan sulfate actually is. And I've told you that it's what's known as a glycosaminoglycan, which is basically this polymer of disaccharides, where you have a uronic acid in the first position, and an amino sugar in uh, the second position. And then you stack these disaccharides on, uh, to the polymer and create uh, a glycosaminoglycan. Now, uh, heparan sulfate, well, in fact, all glycosaminoglycans generally consist of six main disaccharides, and I want to explain the structure of these six main disaccharides, and then I'll discuss what the composition of heparan sulfate is, i.e. which disaccharide is the main one, etc. And then we'll contrast this to heparin, which is also a glycosaminoglycan, but it has a different composition of these six disaccharides, i.e. the main uh, disaccharide in heparin is different from in heparan sulfate. Okay, right. So, uh, we are starting with a discussion of glucose, because glucose is the sugar on which all of these are based. Okay, so, well, it's the most sort of foundational one that people generally know, so it seems like a, a decent starting place to start off the discussion with. Okay, right, so we'll start off with glucose. So, we've started off with this six-membered ring here, where we have a single oxygen and five carbons. We then have the sixth carbon coming off towards us, and this does become important, it is actually really important, because the optical isomerism actually makes a difference. Um, what we will see is we're going to also see the sugar galactose, and galactose is basically identical to um, glucose, but for the fact that uh, it's optically uh, different, the optical isomer of it is a bit different, basically. Okay, so... Um, we'll start off with glucose, however. So, glucose, we have this um, CH2OH group coming off the front. And remember, we're drawing a skeletal structure. So you have, uh, you don't show carbons, where you have a corner that intrinsically or implicitly uh, shows you that that's a carbon. You also do not show hydrogens coming off carbons. So where there are missing bonds, of a carbon, it's assumed that you understand that that missing bond is made up by having a bond to a hydrogen atom coming off there. So, for instance, if we look at this carbon here, it's only got two bonds, one to this carbon down here and one to this alcohol group. So it would then be assumed that there are two hydrogens coming off. Okay, now, to continue our discussion of glucose, you also have an alcohol group coming off this carbon here, but this is going into the page away from us, Okay, so this is going into the page this time. So, uh, this is important because it's going to be coming out of the page when we look at the structure of galactose. Okay, and then, finally, we have more alcohol groups. One coming off down here, and this is coming out of the page at us. Okay, so here is the alcohol group coming out of the page at us. And then you've got an alcohol group coming off this carbon here, this second carbon of the ring, and this is going into the page away from us, and now there are two isomers which are still referred to both as glucose. So one of the isomers of glucose, and I'll draw this separately off here, so basically off this first carbon of the glucose ring, you also have an alcohol group. Now, the alcohol group can either go into the page away from us, okay, and then the hydrogen atom that's implicitly also off this uh, carbon will then come out of the page at us. In that case, you call this alpha glucose. Okay, so this is alpha glucose. Or it can come out of the page at us. Okay, and if it comes out of the page at us, this is known as beta glucose. Okay, so that's the structure of glucose, the two optical isomers of glucose, the alpha glucose and the beta glucose. And we'll see that this is a running theme. Uh, so when we see galactose in a moment, 
we'll see again that you can have two isomers of galactose, one going into the page, where the alcohol group goes into the page, and one where the alcohol group comes out of the page. And the one where the alcohol group coming off the first carbon goes into the page is called the alpha isomer, and the one where the alcohol group comes out of the page at us is known as the beta isomer. Okay, so that's glucose. Now let's move on to galactose. And what you will think is, unless you understand optical isomerism, you will not be able to understand the difference between these two molecules. It's basically identical to glucose, okay? So again, you have this methyl group, well, methylene group with the alcohol group coming off here. Okay, and again, it's coming out of the page at us. Then off here, and I'm leaving the uh, group coming off the fourth carbon for the while because that's the only bit that's going to be different. So then again, you have this alcohol group coming out of the page at us, and off this second carbon, the alcohol group goes into the page away from us, and the hydrogen atom instead will come out of the page at us. So remember, this is a skeletal structure, so we're not showing hydrogen atoms, but in reality, all of these are missing a bond, so they'll also have a hydrogen atom bound to them. And if the alcohol group's going into the page, the hydrogen will be coming out of the page, and if the alcohol group's coming out of the page towards us, the hydrogen atom will be going into the page away from us. Okay, and again, there are two isomers of galactose. One, which is the alpha isomer, uh, which is where the alcohol group goes into the page away from us on uh, the first carbon. And the beta isomer, where the alcohol group on the first carbon comes out of the page at us, that's the beta isomer. Now, just to complete the galactose structure, of this fourth carbon, in the case of galactose, the alcohol group comes out of the page at us, and the hydrogen atom that's also off this carbon will go into the page away from us. So understanding optical isomerism is the key to understanding what the difference between glucose and galactose is. Okay, uh, They have exactly the same uh, elements making them up. They are both C6H12O6, but they are different with respect to their optical isomerism. Okay, you cannot turn glucose into galactose without undergoing a chemical reaction, without breaking this bond between the carbon and the alcohol group and breaking the bond between the carbon and the hydrogen, which in the case of glucose is coming out of the page at us, and then swapping them around. There's not that flexibility. They can't just move uh, and remain bound. It involves a chemical reaction, the conversion of glucose to galactose. So the form of galactose where you have the alcohol group on the first carbon going into the board away from us is then known as alpha galactose, so sticking to the nice naming system that we've got here. And the form of um, glucose where sorry, the form of galactose where you've got the alcohol group on the first carbon going coming into the board well coming out of the page at us is then called beta galactose. Okay, so the difference between glucose and galactose is just the um, optical isomerism of this alcohol group off this uh, fourth carbon of the um, ring, basically. Okay, so now what we'll do is discuss the structure of uh, glucuronic acid, and this is an example of the uronic acids that we can put in this first slot of the disaccharide. So these two are the things that we're going to base everything on. Uh, we'll start off now with glucuronic acid. Okay, so glucuronic acid then. So glucuronic acid is basically based on the structure of glucose. So we'll start off again with this six-membered ring here. Yeah, oxygen's there. Then we have five carbons also making up this ring here, like so. And then... Um, we will, instead of having this methylene group with an alcohol group off it, in glucuronic acid, instead, you have a carboxylic acid group coming off here, but it's still coming out of the page at us. So here comes a carbon out of the page at us, and then what will happen is this carbon will have a oxygen double bonded to it, and then also an alcohol group double bonded to it. So basically, this is a carboxylic acid group stuck off this fifth carbon of the ring, um, and it's coming out of the page at us, okay? Other than that, it's the same structure as glucose. You have an alcohol group in posi off position four, 
going into the page away from us, just like here. And then you have the alcohol group down here off position 3 coming out of the page at us. Okay, and then the alcohol group on position 2 going into the page away from us. And again, in the case of glucuronic acid, you can have two isomers of it. So you can have alpha-glucuronic acid and beta-glucuronic acid. So in alpha-glucuronic acid, you'll have the alcohol group going into the board away from us. In beta-glucuronic acid, you'll have the alcohol group coming um, out of the board at us. And I can't draw both of them on here, because that would then imply that you've got two alcohol groups off there. So I'll draw the other one here. When in fact, of course, you've got one alcohol group and one hydrogen. So in the alpha isomer, it's the alcohol group that's going into the page away from us, and the hydrogen is coming out of the board at us. And in the beta isomer, you've got the alcohol group coming out of the board at us, and then hydrogen going into the page away from us. Okay, so here, this would be the beta isomer. Okay, so alpha glucuronic acid is the name for exactly what I've drawn here. If instead the alcohol group on position 1 was coming out of the page at us, it would be beta glucuronic acid. Okay, right. So, now what we will do is we'll look at uh, something known as iduronic acid, iduronic acid. Okay, so... Alpha glucuronic acid is one of the uronic acids that you can uh, put in this uronic acid position here. And they all have this carboxylic acid group in position 6, basically. That's the characterizing feature of a uronic acid molecule. Okay, now what we'll look at, however, is uh, another uronic acid, which is iduronic acid, it or iduronic acid. Okay, right, so iduronic acid then. So again, let's draw out the glucose structure, and it's good practice to keep drawing these out, so we'll keep doing it, okay? It's the only way to get your brain used to doing it, okay? So here is the six-membered ring. You have an oxygen up here again, and it's, again, iduronic acid is going to be based on uh, the structure of glucose, basically, okay? And... Um, the difference between iduronic acid and glucuronic acid is that in iduronic acid, this carboxylic acid group is going to be going away from the us. It's going to go into the page away from us. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.